Hello, Ron Dosick here, Service Manager, CGC Group Bulldog Heat Pumps, and welcome to the SKV installation video. When your heat pumps arrive, they will be skidded, banded, and shrink wrapped. You'll need snips and a good knife to remove them from the skid. On every skid, there'll be a sheet of paper that gives the job site name, the rep's name, and the model and serial number of all the heat pumps on that skid. So, how do you get the heat pump in the room or get it to where it's got to go? Well, most often that's done with a two-wheel hand truck. Dollies can be used and sometimes lifting devices are required for heavier units. Always remember to be careful and don't knock it about too much. While you're doing this, always check to see if there's any visible damage, dented panels, coil damage, or damage under the filters. It's always good to give it a thorough check over and report any damage or anything that you might find unusual as soon as possible. The installation of all vertical space keeper units, components, and accessories must be in accordance with all regulations of all governing authorities having jurisdiction. It is up to the installing contractor to comply with those codes and regulations. What clearances are required? Bottom, top, back, and the side opposite the filter, it's zero clearance. On the filter side, 14 to 16 inches, and at the front, because there's an electrical compartment at the top and a compressor compartment at the bottom, for servicing purposes, we like to see about 24 to 36 inches. There are many good reasons to properly level the unit. Number one being long life of the air conditioning compressor. Compressor oil in its crankcase can do its job much better when the compressor is level. Also, the condensate drain is dependent upon a level unit for proper drainage, and the fan blower motor will not suffer any undue sideways force on its bearings. Vibration isolation, do we need it? Well, not really. All Bulldog heat pumps are designed and built with their own integral vibration isolators. But if you insist, remember the bottom is concave and any type of isolation you add should be put on the corners. How do we know what wire size to install and what size of breaker to put in the panel? Well, let's take a look at the rating plate. Lots of great information here. A Bulldog heat pump featuring free heat. A space keeper with its full and complete model number right below it. And its serial number just to the right, along with its date code, last four digits. You'll need that when requesting information. Here we have the options, and this is what you're going to need for your wire size. Voltage. Minimum circuit opacity, use that along with your code book to determine the wire size, and there's your maximum fuse size. Compressor rated load amps, locked rotor amps, and to the right we have the fan motor full load amps. How about condensate piping and will you need a trap? Well the answer is no, you will not need an external trap because there is a trap built right into the heat pump. If you take a look at this image, that blue hose dips down and forms the trap underneath the evaporator drain pan. It exits just below the filter and can be connected to a suitable condensate drain at that point. What controls the operation of the heat pump? Well, the thermostat is certainly part of it. This is where the user decides whether they want heating, cooling, or no operation. But what really controls the operation of the heat pump is the circuit board. The circuit board tells all the individual internal components when to come on and when to go off. The circuit board is located in the top electrical compartment and accessed by removing the electrical compartment cover. Here's the circuit board. I'm pointing at the Molex connector where the thermostat is connected to. The LED lights show a cooling call, low and high fan operation, and that there is no alarm. What about ducting? Is it necessary? Well, technically, it isn't. However, if it isn't ducted, the airflow will be concentrated around the SKV unit. To ensure proper airflow distribution, 
the duct designer should consult the airflow performance specifications for the SKV unit. The duct installer then should follow the designer's recommendations and install the ductwork using good installation practices. The heat pump does not have to be in the return air plenum. However, it is very important that return air arrives at the filter section of the heat pump. That can be done by having it in the return air plenum or by providing suitable return air ductwork. What is important is to install the return air plenum in such a way that filter access is easy for maintenance purposes. As all Bulldog heat pumps are designed and built with integral vibration isolation, no canvas connections are required. The loop water supply and return pipes are generally sized for a flow rate of 2 GPM per ton. Temperature of the loop water should be between 85 Fahrenheit and 125 Fahrenheit. The slide says 120, but it really is 125. Prior to startup, the isolation valve should be closed and the building system flushed. It's important to bleed and eliminate all air from the piping system. Heat pumps should not be run during the construction phase of the project. Chemical vapors in the air can cause formicary corrosion of the evaporator coil. Drywall dust can clog up the evaporator coil and cause low performance of the fan motors and wicking of the fan motor bearing oil. How does the heat pump operate in standard heating? Firstly, a heating call has to be established by the thermostat. The WLED will light on the circuit board. The HT LED will light and so will the low fan LED. The heat actuator will open and low fan heating speed will be established. How does cooling work? This begins with the thermostat. Set the thermostat for a cooling call and lower the temperature until a cooling call is established. On the circuit board, the CL LED will light the low fan and high fan LEDs will light. The loop water cooling actuator will open. And after a prescribed time delay, the compressor will come on. Utilities and connections to the building. Specially designed stainless steel braided hoses are used to connect the heat pump to the building water supply. Always check and make sure that the gaskets are in the connections that go on the isolation valves. Remember not to over tighten these connections as the gaskets can be crushed, causing leaks. The hoses should be connected to the heat pump first and then to the isolation valves. Line voltage power is connected at the bottom right hand corner of the circuit board. Thank you for watching. I hope this video has been informative and if you have any further questions or comments, please don't hesitate to contact CGC Group. We're always interested in hearing from you.